Hi guys, Bennett Carbo Creations. This is the second video I'm doing in my quick and dirty slicing playlist. Uh, today I'm going to look at slicer, white cura. There's three areas uh, I'm going to look at, which is your printer setup, your filament setup, and your print settings. Uh, similar to the last video I did on cura, this isn't meant to be a technical deep dive into the software, but more of a quick start guide to get you up and printing as quickly as possible. So with saying that, let's get going. This video is sponsored by Tool 3D Australia, your one-stop shop for an extensive range of cost-effective, high-quality 3D filaments. Their extensive range includes PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, wood, metal and silk in both 1.75mm and 3mm diameters. They also sell premium Duraplat coated nozzles for a range of extruders and are supplies of BuildTac, which provides an optimal printing surface that allows for a clean and easy removal of completed builds. When you need consistent performance, finished prints and filaments at a realistic price, Torwell filaments fit the bill. Visit www.torwell3d.com.au today. For those of you who are unsure, Slicer is another piece of software that will slice your 3D models and create the G-code for your 3D printer, and it is also a free download. It can be downloaded from slicer.org, or you can do a quick Google search for Slicer, spelled slic 3 Ah. You can also access the full manual for Slicer on the website. It will go into detail on how to use the software inside and out. So once you've downloaded and installed Slicer, you're going to want to open it up and the first lot of settings we're going to look at on the top right hand side is our printer settings. The great thing about Slicer is you can set up multiple different profiles for all your different printers. Now I'm going to be setting up Slicer today for the Anet A8, but I also have a CR10 so I could also set up a profile for the CR10. First you want to go to the general tab and up the top you'll be able to set the shape of the bed. This will be the X and Y dimensions of the heated plate for the A8, which is 220 by 220 millimeters. My A8, like most others, only has one extruder. I don't have it connected to the computer via USB, but I do have OctoPrint set up to it, so I can also put in the details of my OctoPrint server. The last thing I want to make sure is set in this tab is that the G-code flavor is RepRap. Right, moving on to the custom G-code, uh, there are some things I put in here, I managed to copy across from something that Cura automatically put in, is a couple of G-codes that happen before and after a print, and I'll quickly go through what those are now. So in the starting G-code, uh, to be honest, the only one that's really useful in there is the G28, which is homing the printer. Uh, all the rest I actually need to remove because they're not supported by uh, the RepRap firmware. So with the ending G-code, both G91 and G90 have to do with moving the extruder head away from the model. And the M commands are, as you can see there, turning off the extruder, turning off the heat bed, disabling the motors, essentially putting the printer into a state where it's safe to be left alone. Finally, go to the extruder tab. Here, you'll need to enter the size of the nozzle you have on the printer. So in my case, I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, the ANET A8 does come with a 0.4 mil nozzle uh, out of the box, but you can get 0.3 and 0.2 nozzles. You'll also need to set the limits for the layer heights. Uh, this needs to be uh, a division of the step, uh, the stepper motor for the printer. So in the case of the ANET A8, I believe it's point, point oh 0.04. So I've put in a minimum of 0.08 and a maximum of 0.24. And you can also play with the retraction settings in here as well. Once all the printer settings have been put in, click the little save disk and it's time to take a look at the filament settings. So for the filament settings, uh, we just need to click the little gear wheel next to filament. And we'll go through uh, each tab very quickly. Uh, the first filament tab, uh, you can set up the diameter of your filament, uh, its extrusion multiplier, give it a color if you want, and the recommended temperatures for that filament. For example, PLA is generally between uh, 190 to 220, depending on the brand. Um, I run mine at roughly about 210, so you can see that 210's been put in there. Looking under the cooling tab, we can see the settings for the fan. I generally leave these as they are when I'm first starting printing. I go and play with them at a later stage. I don't play with any custom G codes, notes, or overrides. So pretty much once you've put in the filament diameter and the preferred temperatures for both the extruder and the heat bed, 
You're right to click save and we'll move on and we'll look at the print settings. To do this, just click on the gear next to print settings. As I go through these settings, I'm going to be making changes so we can print a 20 by 20 mil calibration cube. So starting off with the layer height, I don't want something too fine or something too thick. Uh, so I'll dial in a layer height of 0.2 millimeters. I want the first layer height just a little bit thicker just for good bed adhesion and make sure I've got a good solid foundation to build off. So I'll put the first layer height in at 115%. I'll leave both the vertical and horizontal shells at 3 which are the default but I will change the seam position to random. This is to make sure that the model doesn't get a, a zipper like quality from the extruder starting and stopping at the exact same point. Looking at the infill, being that this is only going to be a 20 by 20 calibration cube, I don't really need uh, much infill at all. Uh, you could probably get away with 0% but just for some extra strength and rigidity in the model I am going to put the fill density up to 10%. Moving on to the skirt and brim, I don't want to use a skirt. Uh, a skirt essentially just pre-primes the uh, extruder nozzle. Uh, once it's completed its skirt around the model, it then goes and starts building the model up itself. I do want to add a brim however, but unlike the skirt, it will build up material all the way to the base of the model, creating a larger surface area that helps the model adhere to the bed. So I'm going to set my brim width to 3mm. Support material, again being the calibration cube, I don't need any support material. In the speed settings, I'm going to set the speed to 60mm per second with a 25% reduction in speed for the first layer. Again, this is just to help with a good first layer adhesion. The other areas we don't really need to cover to get started. So now that I've got these settings in, I can go up to the little save disk icon and save my print settings. So now that all the settings are there, I'm going to go up to add, select my calibration cube model file, and we can see it on the virtual build plate. Now I could potentially send this model straight to my printer via my OctoPrint uh, using the send a printer button here but in this example I'm going to export the g-code to a flash disk and take it across and manually put that into the printer itself. So I just want to hit on export g-code I'll save it to file or onto the flash disk directly and now it's right to go plug into the printer and print. So there we go guys, that's the calibration cube printed with the slicer settings. As you can see it's turned out pretty well, there's still uh, one or two little things that could possibly be improved, but for beginning and getting just something printed off nice and quick, it's more than adequate and enough to get you going. So the next video I'm going to do in this series is on repeater, so be sure to come back and check it out. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button to let me know, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe, I've got content coming out all the time. You can follow me on all my social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Carbo Creations. And until next time, thanks for watching. See you around.